So we've now reached the part of the DNG video series where we start to look at protecting different things with the Duo Network Gateway. We're going to start off by protecting a web application as documented in the Duo documentation. And then in upcoming videos, we will look at protecting SSH servers and RDP sessions as well. So this demonstration is really going to focus on a web service that's internal to my lab network to simulate the ability to connect to internal web applications without the need for a VPN and only using the DNG while still enforcing two-factor authentication. So as we start off uh, with this, um, again, I like to refer to the Duo documentation just to kind of show you how easy it is to follow the documentation in order to get your own environment set up and, and, and configured as well. There is a few prerequisites um, to doing this with regards to uh, ensuring DNS records are in place, ensuring that the uh, Duo Network Gateway has the ability to communicate with the web applications that you're looking to protect and around the certificates, uh, whether you choose to use your own certificates or whether you choose to use the Let's Encrypt certificates, which are free. So do take a read of the Duo documentation around this, just so that you've got all areas covered. So it's pretty straightforward to set up, and we're going to go through the process to actually see how straightforward it is to set up. And um, there's going to be a few elements that uh, we configure, uh, especially around DNS, that might not totally make sense as to why you would do such a thing. Um, but don't worry about the DNS aspect for now, because I will be looking at covering that in more detail in the upcoming videos where I uh, look at configuring RDP uh, where we need to focus on uh, the DNS as well uh, a lot more. So we'll go through the steps as is and we will um, get our web application configured and then I'll use a different host which is not connected to uh, the internal network to try and connect or simulate that connection from an external uh, client connecting into the DNG and uh, go through that process before being given access remotely to the web application that we are looking at protecting. So to start off, we need to navigate to the uh, Duo admin panel and we need to start off by protecting a uh, web application. So I'll probably need to just sign back in here. So I'll just do that now. And then once we signed into our Duo admin panel, we can then navigate over to applications and then protect an application. And then let's start off by Type in web application and you can see here what is returned. We've got the Duo Network Gateway web application. So we'll click protect on that. And this is where we get um, all the details we need in order to successfully configure this. And uh, as I pointed out in a previous video around the universal uh, prompt, this is where you have the uh, option now to uh, use the traditional prompt or now as you can see uh, we can use the universal prompt as well and then you've got your, your usual um, policy settings where you can either use the global policy uh, create group policies or create an application policy I always recommend for each application you create an individual application policy and or group policy uh, if required but definitely what you want to do is make sure you have uh, an application policy configured. Then you've got your global policy there above. And then just like with the uh, 
protection of uh, many different applications you can then decide to give it a name so if you are protecting many different web applications it's wise to ensure that you make sure that the name reflects just so that you can identify it easier so I'm going to give this a name of DNG and what we're looking to protect is a firepower management center uh, so we'll call it DNG FMC demo and then you've got the uh, the usual settings there with the username normalization and the rest of the uh, settings there so we'll um, create an application policy we'll just give it a default policy for now um, so we'll just say DNG FMC demo uh, require a moment, uh, we'll enforce two-factor authentication, uh, we'll, we'll just leave it all as it is now, we'll just assign that policy there and uh, what we'll do then is we'll just, once we're happy with that, we'll save that configuration there. Now let's just go across to our, so if we just look at the documentation very quickly again, so we've, we've done that, um, now we need to go into the uh, network gateway, the dual network gateway in order to continue. So what we want to do is we want to get to the application section here and then we want to add new and we've got three options, web app, SSH relay or RDP relay. So in our case, in this video, we're focusing on web app. So we'll select that and then what we have here is the ability now to add in uh, those uh, keys and host name from our admin panel so let's do that now so we'll just quickly get these added in so client ID will go into the integration key client secret will go into secret key and then host name goes into host name just like that so we we'll copy that into there now I've got a few uh, settings that where we start to look at uh, DNS now, where DNS becomes quite uh, apparent. And if you're okay and familiar with DNS and how the DNG works in terms of how it utilizes DNS, then um, you know you'll have no issues with this. But I have had um, customers run through the documentation and still not be clear as to. Um, kind of what the the exact purpose is of these uh, different types of DNS records that we uh, need to make sure are in. So as I say in upcoming videos, I will jump into that in a little bit more detail. But for now, we'll just populate these fields and get everything set up as we as we need it to be. So now we need to give it an external URL and this is, uh, this is the URL where users will go to access the internal URL which is protected by the Duo Network Gateway. So it's telling us here that we need to create a CNAME DNS record for the external URL um, that we enter into this field here above and make the value of the record uh, basically uh, go to the A record. Um, so again, if that doesn't make too much sense to you at the moment, um, do not worry too much about that because we will uh, hopefully cover that. So I'm just going to quickly add a C name record on my uh, DNS and then we can return back to the video. So what we'll do now is we'll input our external uh, URL and this is going to be a CNAME DNS uh, record in our public DNS. As I said, we will cover this in a little bit more detail in an upcoming video, so don't worry too much about this at the moment. Just make sure that your public DNS record has a CNAME for this particular web application and that the value to that points to your a record for the DNG which is in my case paul.networkwizkid.co.uk so I'm just going to input mine now
Okay, and I'm going to generate a certificate with Let's Encrypt. And that certificate there is valid for 90 days and automatically renews. And my internal URL is going to be pmclab.networkwizkid.com. And I'm using a different domain internal, uh, which is probably highly likely you are going to be too, but uh, this domain is also uh, an, an external domain as well. Um, but I'm using it internal as well, so that's why that domain is different. I am going to use a private CA certificate for this. So that's my private CA certificate there in there. And I'm going to change that to FMC Lab. And the rest of the settings we could probably leave as they are. So let's add application. Okay, that's cool. So application has been successfully added now. So we're good on that front. So we can see external website settings. We've got a certificate that's been generated now for our C name. And that C name resolves to the A record that we specified. And we can see that the other bits and pieces there have, have taken effect. So in terms of configuration now if we just go back to our documentation so we've run through all these settings here and if you want to read a little bit more details about it then you can uh, read the documentation but we've done that and we've done the external bits and pieces we've done the internal website settings and uh, it's as simple as that really so it's time to actually test so to test, we need to navigate to the external URL of the application that we just configured um, for the gateway. So ours will be the fmc.networkwithkid.co.uk and then we should be redirected to our SAML IDP. In our case, we're using the Duo single sign-on and uh, we'll complete our primary authentication there before we're then prompted to complete the uh, secondary factor authentication with uh, Duo as well. Once that's done, we should then be able to access the application as well. All right, so with the web application configuration now in place, we should be good now to give it a test and what i have here is a remote client that's going to simulate that remote connectivity onto our internal web application and this is just going to show you the sort of behavior and what to expect and give you an insight as to kind of what it's going to look like with that vpnless uh, access into uh, internal applications. So I'm just going to pivot across to that remote machine that you can see on your screen there and um, we'll give it a go. And you can see now that I've been redirected and I am now going to complete two-factor authentication. So I'm going to send a push to my enrolled device right here. And I've received that to my phone right now. And I can confirm on my phone that it is the web application for the uh, DNG. So I will approve that. A slight delay here, but uh, there you see it can be uh, it's loading now. And as you can see, I've now been given access uh, remotely to my firepower management center that's internal to my network. 
So this is just one example of being able to protect on-premise applications, web applications, without the need for a VPN solution and using the Duo Network Gateway. I hope this video has been useful. In the upcoming videos, what we will then do is we will start to take a look at how we can use the DNG for SSH. And then lastly, we will finish off and conclude with using the DNG for remote desktop protocol accessing RDP servers.